Hello everyone, my name is Tim. Welcome to my channel. It's called Sarasota Tim. I live in Boynton Beach, Florida, but I came from Sarasota, so hence the name. I didn't want to change the channel name. Uh, today I would like to give you a review on living full-time in a 16-foot camper. And uh, a real quick story, what happened was I had a condominium in Sarasota and I was there for uh, almost six years. And I was a renter. My rent was $1,000, $1,050, something like that. And over the five years, it, uh, it went up to um, $1,150. I think it was $1,025 in the beginning, went up to $1,150. So, you know, everybody gets rent raises. And over that period of time, I suppose, uh, you know, for what I was getting, it was, a, you know, the, the average, so no big deal. But then came a um, pandemic, and after the pandemic ended, a lot of people didn't pay rents. I was renting from someone that uh, had 18 units uh, where I lived, 10 or 12, something like that. So he was a, an investor. He wasn't just someone renting me out a, a single rental property he owned. As I knew many neighbors of mine did, and they never saw a rent increase. They were never even $1,000 a month. They had been there for years, and they were renting from people that just never, they just appreciated a good tenant and took care of the place. And so everybody can do business differently. I'm not saying that my landlord, but this is what happened. He raised me $500 when everybody started raising rents. And that was really a shocker because that's a 50% increase. So I said, forget it. So I moved out, gave notice. We got all of our deposits back and everything. We were, uh, my girlfriend and I were exemplary tenants. I mean, anybody that rents to me is lucky to have me because I'm clean, I'm quiet, I'm considerate. I pay my bills on time, even early. So that brings me to living in a, a wolf pup camper a 16-foot Cherokee uh, Forest River Wolf Pup Limited. It's a 2016. Sorry for the kind of the, the messy bed back there. I am a single person, although I'm extremely neat. It's just that this bed is um, sideways. So he moved the bed this way, put the TV over here. I'm glad he did. I love it. So my review... I moved into this in June, uh, in the summer. I'm in Palm Beach County, Florida. So anyway, let's get back to the review. The review is the Cherokee Wolf Pup Camper. I have the 16 FQ, and the FQ means front queen, and it has a full rear bath. The other camper that they make that's the sister to this is the... Um, BHS. It's a bunkhouse. So in the back of the camper, uh, on the side, there's two, uh, two bunks and a hatch door that opens up on the outside of the camper that you can actually escape from, or you can load things, say on the bottom bunk. So I kind of thought that would be the one I would really need because there's not a lot of storage, although there's quite a bit, uh, you know, for clothes and things like that, <clears throat> but not for like, let's say you're not a minimalist like I am. Uh, yeah, I can need, I need to be more of a minimalist. Then um, you don't really have anywhere. There's a storage unit underneath the bed and there's a, a, a door outside the camper that you can put some things in, but that's generally a reserve for uh, the, the hookups, the hoses and uh, jacks and, you know, some more, things like that. So I bought this camper and my review on towing it would be um, not that extent of a honest review I can give you because although I towed it all the way from North Carolina to South Florida, which is about 700 miles, it didn't give me any problem. Um, the people that had it used it only, I think they said they towed it six times. And they had it underneath underneath one of these big awning, tall uh, roofs that you could put RVs under. 
So um, everything works on this. It, it has all the options. It has a, um, a furnace in it, which is optional. So 20,000 BTU. And it has a 13,500 BTU uh, Dometic roof air conditioner. It has the full rear bath and with a little tub. And the, they talk about on YouTube, a couple of videos I watched, the counter that this camera's sitting on, it's not a laminated like top. It's a solid, uh, you know, it's not granite, but I mean, it's a solid piece. It's not anything stuck together over a board. Uh, the uh, Cherokee, uh, at, you know, part of the um, Force River, their, uh, uh, their quality that they put in their bigger campers, they've put a lot of that into their small one. Most of these small campers that are 16 feet, and most of the small campers, like I say, are very cheaply put together. First of all, they're all cheaply put together. <laughs> these are not custom homes. Uh, they have to be lightweight for towing, so there's a certain uh, balancing act they got to do when manufacturing these because, you know, you you got to have it lightweight. And this is a design to be something that you can pull with almost anything. You don't have to have a big truck. I have a Toyota 4Runner. It's a 2021. It's a six-cylinder motor. So you can have a maximum of 4,000 pounds total gross vehicle weight here. And I've got a thousand, a five, five thousand pound towing capacity with my Forerunner, so it's a nice little match. Um, the in my review, the tongue weight is over four hundred pounds on this trailer, and that does not include the propane tank and the battery. I have the refrigerator that's like a dorm refrigerator right here. I'll show you. I don't have the. I think in the newer FQs they do have a residential style refrigerator. It's not a full size, but it's, you know, bigger than this little thing. Uh, another good point to on my review of this uh, after living in it for six months is when the pandemic came, there was a shortage of RVs. Everybody started buying them. Uh, people couldn't travel. Airfare was a problem. Uh, you know, there were lockdowns. So people were buying cars and traveling and they were buying RVs. Uh, people didn't want to be <laughs> sitting around. They wanted to still go and do. And many Americans have money. So they bought these. Well, when the supply issue, remember the supply issue, which is what we're still having, I guess, to a degree. They ran out of RVs. Uh, everything that was built, remember there were acres of them. Then their uh, lots were empty. So then the manufacturers couldn't get parts. Like they couldn't get the ACs. They couldn't get these refrigerators. They couldn't get pumps to pump the water, the parts, spigots, all these things that probably were made, you know, made in China, various parts. So they were slamming them together. They were using other parts they weren't using when they had good supply coming. They were uh, laying off people. So they had these people that didn't know what they were doing and just really making some very shoddy RVs. Now, I know this because I know people in the business, and I went and looked at them, and a guy told me, do not buy an RV that was built in 2020, 2021, probably even now. I think supply issues are still an issue. But in 2016, long before we could even spell pandemic, this is the, I like to put it this way, this Wolf Pup 16 FQ is extremely popular. People love these. For the small 16 foot, if you've ever gone to an RV show and you walk in any small camper, it looks like, ew, you know, it's kind of, man, there's nothing in here. This is a hard sided tent, you know? This is like a home. I mean, this kitchen, the booth, the rear bath with the tub, the beautiful cabinetry, microwave, and the products they use. I've got the uh, longer awning. I've got a 26 inch wide door. Small campers usually don't, they have a 22. I've got this big gate that drops down in the back on the bumper that you can put totes and 
bikes and whatever you want, a full spare. It's got the mag wheels. This, the 16FQ, I like to say it like this, is the Honda or Toyota of small campers. It's not the cheapy ones. And believe me, this is not like the top of the line small campers. But even like when you compare it to a Casita or a Scamp, which is really small, those uh, little fiberglass two halves they put together and people love them and there's a cult following that buy them. Those things are nowhere near as comfortable feeling to live. Now, there is an adjustment. And I would say, I would say, I'm just going to be honest with you. They talk about this being Sleeps 3 or Great Couples Camper. This is a single person's camper. Sure, my girlfriend comes over, stays a couple of nights. You know, we we bump into each other a little bit. You can tell everybody you add in here, it's, it's more people. Uh, I have this chair I'm sitting in because when the bed was moved the way you see it behind me, the gentleman that had the failing health had a, actually a recliner chair, a very small one, be it, but a recliner chair put right here so he could watch that TV. And I took it out uh, and just put a regular beach chair in here that I can move around. I've even got it facing uh, the kitchen here now, which I've never done before. But I, like I said, that they use in the Cherokee line, their upper, bigger, longer campers that employ a lot of that into uh, their small 16 FQ and their bunkhouse model. I've got a, a nice window here and a big bay window over here at the dinette. Um, the, the refrigerator is small. So like I said, even for two people, if you start packing in, you know, more than a few days worth of food, unless you're a smart packer, you know, you have a very small freezer. There is a freezer in it though. Uh, if you want to make ice or you're trying to freeze some meats so you don't have to worry about them spoiling, you're better off just going to the store, you know, a couple of times a week than trying to buy a bunch of groceries. So um, before I show you the, uh, the tour here of the camper, but this is a review. So I'm just living in it right now. So uh, nothing's messy, but things are just like out a little bit when I show you around. Uh, like you can see, my bed can be made a little nicer. But I was trying to tell you earlier, when it's like this, it's kind of hard to make that, that blanket so nice and taut and straight. So I just kind of throw it over there, you know, because I'm going to be on it <laughs> in a little while anyway, you know, at nighttime. I put a running carpet down here on the floor, I'll show you. And um, so uh, on my review, uh, what else can I tell you? I've got no... I've got no yeah. I've lived in it. People buy these, you know, they use them a couple of times a year, three or four times a year for the weekend. I'm 24 seven for six months. That's probably more than most people would use their camper in their lifetime. And although I haven't traveled with it, because see, every time you pull these things, you know, they're made with like wood screws and staples. So when you're pulling them, you know, everything is moving and tweaking and uh, it's got to be tough on them, you know, to be towing all the time, you know, moving around, traveling a lot, taking it on long trips, uh, bouncing up and down the suspension, uh, where this one is still like brand new because uh, I know they were slow drivers. They were elderly and I think they only went to the beach. You know, they already lived kind of close to the coast in North Carolina. Or, or locally, who knows where they went, but they only went somewhere like six times, they told me. And these were good Christian people. I have no reason to doubt them. Plus, it, you can tell by looking at it. It's like new. And uh, I haven't towed with it. So that's one of the reasons why I probably don't have anything else to complain about. Uh, and the AC unit was my own fault for not running it on medium. So if you live in one of these or have one of these, if you're getting any water, that's why. You have to have a lot of airflow up and through there, through those vents. Uh, the toilet is not a porcelain toilet. 
It's also a Dometic. That was my point. When they had all those uh, plenty of supplies and they were building these and they it's kind of like their little pride and joy of a small camper. It was one of the best sellers on the market. Like I say, there's a cult following like there is with Scamp, Casita, and a few others that people know are really good. Uh, it's a single axle, and I think it's sold new for $19,000. I have every single owner's manual, pamphlet, everything. Uh, it even has a, DV, a CD AM FM stereo. It's Bluetooth, the microwave. And you know when you get a new phone, that little plastic you can pull off the screen, and then you know how they put them on TVs and, and stuff. It still has it on the stereo and on the touch keypad of the microwave. I'll show you. So these people kept, they were like me. They, they take very good care of it. You know, I walk softly in here. I clean my feet. I, I close doors. I turn the faucets off gently. I don't wrench on everything. You know, I don't have kids in here or I'm not one of these kind of people that abuse it, slam anything. And I even have on my step outside a big CBS block underneath it. So when I step out of this camper, it hits a solid, I have a piece of wood on that and the bottom step. The newer ones have this thing that comes down to the ground that does give it a brace. But this one in that year, they haven't designed that yet. And, you know, they can end up being, you know, tweaking on the hinges and the bolts that hold it on the bottom of the camper. So I got it, you know, braced. So I do, I've done everything I can do. Uh, the floor jacks are down. The scissor jacks, I mean. It's it's solid. It's level. Uh, trying to think if there's anything else that I can complain about. I know that the furnace works. Oh, <laughs> there's a two-burner stove in here I'll show you during the tour. It's never been used. I turned it on to see if it works, and it does. They never use it, and I don't use it. I have a, a camp stove that I use on the, on the outside, and I have a Coleman grill of which I, I cook. Because you know, if you start cooking in here, I've used the microwave to heat up my coffee. But if you start cooking in here or frying eggs and bacon or burgers and stuff like that, although it sounds kind of fun, all you do is just grill outside or get one of these camp stoves and put it on something. They work the same way. I have the nice awning, you know, unless it's raining or something, but don't eat at that time. But if you start cooking in here, the smells just will start. The grease, it'll just stick to the fabrics. It, it's like a smoker. You'll never get it out. So, and I use, um, I have, I'll show you in the plugs, I've got those uh, air wick or glade air freshener things I keep in here to make it smell nice. Um, so I'm sorry that was a lot, you know, said, and a lot of it wasn't even relevant to like a actual review of the 16 FQ, but I'm just telling you to kind of get a whole uh, idea of my experience. Cause I, I know a lot of people don't live in 16 foot campers. I know a lot of people do live in campers, uh, you know, with slide outs on them and fifth wheels and, Oh, they're so beautiful, but you got to have a hundred thousand dollar vehicle to pull it. And so it's really it was an answered prayer for me when my landlord raised my rent five hundred dollars. And hopefully, um, you know, after living in it and getting something back for it, my usage value, it really ha won't have cost me anything. And so that's even a another thing of why I love living in it, because I'm basically like if you own a house, you make a mortgage every month, but whenever you sell that house or whenever you do your taxes, you're paying yourself versus rent. Anyway, I digress. So let's get to the uh, to the um, tour, and I'll show you what I got going on here. I love it. I recommend it. It's I couldn't have gotten luckier. I'm glad I didn't get a casita. I used to follow a guy on uh, YouTube. He's lived in it. Well, he's got him a big class C now. Everybody that's ever come in here just says they love it. it. It'll sell like the first person that's really serious about a small camper to the first person that looks at it.
believe me. So anyway, again, my channel is Sarasota Tim. I'd appreciate you subscribing. I have a lot of other videos on my channel and uh, I post regularly, most every day actually. So if you'd like to follow along with my journey and I do plan on traveling with this uh, in the spring of this year with my new weight distribution hitch and uh, we'll see how my review, my update comes uh, after pulling it a little ways. I'm going to take as good a care as I can, drive slowly and stay in the slow lane. But uh, I do appreciate you watching and I'll either make this part one and the tour part two, or I'm just going to turn the phone off right now and turn the camera around so I can show you what I got in here. But anyway, thanks very much for viewing. Hit that subscribe button and whatever you do, if you're thinking about doing something in your life, do it now. Do it today. Do it whenever you can, as soon as you can, because nobody's promised tomorrow. And these are the good old days. So get out there and crush it. Okay, everyone. Here's the uh, tour of the wolf pup. And as I mentioned, I'm just living in it. So I don't have it all dressed up like a uh, show model. So there's the bed that I mentioned. It goes this way across the camper instead of up and down so if you do have someone sleeping with you they have to crawl over you it's not really a big deal and i'm alone in here so it's no big deal and then i've got a 32 inch vizio <clears throat> here that i mounted it holds very well you got this cabinetry up here that's very nice goes all the way back through even though that door doesn't open you get all the way that whole thing I keep um, shorts, socks, and underwear and stuff like that. <clears throat> I leave these uh, doors open just so I don't wear out the little... Let me zoom in for you there. Just so I don't, you know, break these or whatever. I just kind of lay them there. And then I have installed these little uh, battery... I can get it on there. Little lights. These definitely help. And that's just my um, pantry that I use. Here's the microwave and the stove that I told you, the two burner stove that never gets used. Turn the little fan heater off. Microwave, I told you it's got that plastic still on there. That's why that looks a little weird. I can literally peel that right off. And it's the same way for the stereo. There's a, a thing here I could peel off too. It's still on there. It has these wonderful shades. There's the outside, goes up and down. These are some fake flowers. This is the uh, real wood table. It has two poles. That's a, that goes, it's a rough piece. It's a blind that's it's under the sink here. I was just kind of looking around in there. I took them out. There's just a couple of screws that hold them in. Believe me, when you don't see the uh, outside part, the inside part like if you raise these up, they're just this press board looking stuff. It's not very pretty. But on the outside, here's my uh, refrigerator. I mentioned it's got the freezer. And um, you, know, you get a lot of stuff in there. And there's my Dometic um, refri cooler refrigerator with the light. I keep my um, ice in there. It melts very slowly because I don't have it on freeze. At 36 degrees, it takes like three days for the ice to completely melt. This is the um, <clears throat> tape job that I did. There's like a, a, a button right here. And I guess that's it. But it had a little tear. So this is a, like exact match of the wood. You can't even tell. I taped it. And then I've got more storage up in here. We just have a bunch of stuff crammed in there. And uh, that's my fan that I use to circulate in here. Uh, this is my hanging closet that I use. I did stick on one of these cool lights. Forever I didn't have that light, I just got it recently. I couldn't see in here, I had to hold a flashlight. But now I can see which one of my collared shirts and which one aren't, and these are just some AA batteries, four of them you get at Dollar Tree. Then this is the uh, door I was talking about. It's got this, these lines in it, make it look like it's a real thick wood door. And here's my full bath. 
Uh, all the lights on the ceiling, there's three of these. One here, one that's on, there was four of them. Another one, and there's one underneath that over the bed. And they're all LED. You have a big mirror, a really nice deep sink in here for the bathroom. There's all my personal things. And this is the, uh, let me back out for you guys. Yeah, I just had this, the stock shower head, uh, which, you know, the water comes out just fine. But if you get one of those ones that really pushes it out, if you were to be boondocking and you're, you know, your holding tank, you'd lose all your water quickly. So I just use that one and it works fine. And there's a tub. Uh, this is, I shower in it two or three times a day. Everything's fine. No problem with it all. And uh, I bought a couple of these commands. Um, hang a towel on, a little hand towel here. And the nice thing about these, you just pull this straight down and these come right off. They don't leave any marks or glue on the, on the walls. I've never screwed anything in anything. I did put a new um, vent thing here. The other one was kind of dull looking and brittle. I didn't want it to break or leak and it has a fan. It only sucks out. It doesn't have a reversible. You get storage under here for your toiletries. I keep a bunch of stuff. Toilet works just fine. <clears throat> See a little thing here they left on you. It just hangs on the door. Every now and then a mosquito will come in because I live in Florida. So I got this here to get them if I can ever find them. They're pretty quick. And there's my big bay window. This is the, I never even sit here. The space is just like, also makes into a bed. I sit in this chair or I'm in my bed. And you can even sit on my Dometic. I sit right here very comfortably. Uh, I've got it right now about 78 degrees in here because that is actually a heater. A fan heater going right now and then the big fan is circulating it through the whole camper and I have it backed off and see that'll actually shut off this is one of those good ones it cycles off the fan doesn't just continue to blow I'll keep my trash can down here I use Walmart bags this is the 20,000 BTU furnace and the fuse panel and uh, this is a, an LED light it lights up nice at night and there's also a exhaust fan never been used that's clean as the day it came from the factory brand new bottle of Tito's and my hundred dollar wine glass mouth blown lead crystal there's a nice candle I keep it smelling good I mentioned about these um, these things here there's one in the bathroom you can turn them off and on smell good I get that little liquid in there smells nice in here uh, this the guy had that clock up there. I like having that. It's just four three in the afternoon. It's raining in Boynton Beach, Florida. There's my forerunner right out there. You got this big window that goes all the way up. Outside the coach is a full awning. It goes all the way down. Some of the small campers have small awnings, and I mentioned about the twenty six inch wide door. Uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, this got these. Speakers, one here and one here. And so I usually just link my iPhone to the stereo here through Bluetooth and I play whatever I want on YouTube or iHeartRadio, whatever, and it really sounds nice. And there's exterior speakers too. All you do is press a button and light up number two and you have speakers on the outside there, which I don't use because I try to be considerate to my landlord who lives in that tiny home right there. Um... Hang my towel back up. It's raining out there. Yeah, I love it. I mean, <clears throat> looking back, you got it on fisheye there. It looks like it's a long ways, doesn't it? Here, I put it on a regular view. I put this little runner down to save my floor and, you know, protect everything. Then I get everything I want out of here and my grill is right there there's my coleman grill and then i have 
in my storage a, a regular camp stove that runs on butane and propane that uh, will cook it up. I fry eggs, bacon, whatever I want, fry a burger. Of course, I got the grill for that. And that's a tour of the, uh, here's my 16, I mean my uh, 12, 13,500 BTU Dometic air conditioning system. And my new Vizio TV, which is a smart TV. I'll power with this beautiful iPhone I have here, 13 Pro. And this thing right here is worth the money. I got a Dometic CFX uh, 35 liter. And plugging that in, it's very, very efficient. Doesn't hardly use any electricity. And uh, between that and this little dorm uh, college fridge here. Got all the refrigeration I want. I got all the cooking I want on the outside. I got air conditioning. I got heat. I got showering, tubs, shaving, sinks. I mean, entertainment, TV, beautiful bed with a memory foam on it, comfortable chair. I put this pad on there. It's awesome. Just a beach chair. It works great. Everything is great. There's my neighbor with his Class C. <laughs> He's right outside the window. That's Tim also. I'm Tim 2. He's Tim 1. My coffee maker. I make coffee in the morning. I've got a toaster in here. I drop a couple of English muffins. And uh, it's going with my life. Living in a 16-foot Wolf Pup FQ 2016 model. Like brand new condition. Everything works. And everything is working 24-7 because I'm living in it. So thanks very much for viewing the video, everybody. And if you're considering buying a small camper, I highly recommend. But do not buy anything built in 2021 and maybe even right now. Buy yourself something a, a little earlier. They're the same things. And you won't have any of those problems with them putting in different products they couldn't get and just you know putting whatever they could in there to sell them. So just be aware of that. All right. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for viewing. Please subscribe and crush it.